All right, so we're back. So the next thing I want to talk about is programs. This is something I've been I was tripping out on today. Um, you go six shift six doink, and then you get into um, drum one is what we're working with right now, and then this program is all the sounds for all the notes which are assigned to the pads. So it's four times sixteen is the amount of sounds per program. Now it doesn't mean that the the MIDI drum one only has one program. You can assign uh, a couple programs. That's why you have you know up here you can do a new program. This one's called Classy and I can also do um, I can I can make a new one there. So you can have as many programs as you want I believe. I don't know what the, the limit is actually. I'm sure there's a limit somewhere. Um, per MIDI drum and then what's cool about this so if you if you hit you see how the note 36 note 37 it changes and it shows you the the name which I don't have it together very well but it's good enough you can go into parameters which is the next one this is the assign page where you can actually assign the sound to the note and then the note to the pad if you want to get wacky with it um, and whether it's stereo or mono and so if you go into the parameters of let's say that snare this is a cool page and I use this a lot um, you have an envelope where you can lessen the attack which is the, f the front of it see that it's almost like putting a little delay on it or a little pre-delay so it takes you're just trimming it basically if you didn't want so much attack on the snare you can lessen that by upping it all the way to where there's you know you take the main part of it away now the decay is just the tail end of it all right if I wanted to shorten the tail end see how that works oops because this has reverb on it, on the sample, it's actually kind of taking the reverb away. So here's with, all right, here's with that. Oops. Okay. So there's that, which is cool. And the default, I think, is six. They just give you a little tail, so in case there's a click at the end or something, you won't hear it. And then you have a filter, which is also cool. So you don't hear it until you put some resonance on it. So it's a frequency thing. All the 15. And then you go up here and mess with this. So you can do play the, you know, which is cool. Um, so you got a filter, then let's go to tune. You can tune it, you can tune any, pa any sample. Now this is tuning the... Okay, so this is tuning here. So let's find the piano. There it is. So let's go to there and tune that up. There you go. So that's, you know, tuning is cool. Unfortunately, you can't record those changes. 
That you can probably do that on other NPCs. I don't know. This is the only NPC I've ever had. This in the 2000. Um, but this is the parameter page, and it's cool. It's, it actually works some cool magic if you want. On to the drum tab. Program change receive, MIDI volume receive, current whatever VAL stands for. A 127 is some sort of volume. Um, pad to internal sound on. Okay, this is an assignment. And purge. Purge is cool because pressing do it will erase all sounds not used in any programs in memory. So if you've been screwing around with the programs and kind of have changed sounds and and there's just like samples lingering in memory taking it up, you can just hit purge and it, it'll give you a do it um, right there. There's nothing on you. See, it says zero sounds not used. So, But if there are, it'll say, oh, there's three sounds, and it'll give you a do it right there, and then you can purge those fuckers. So purge is pretty cool if you're into purging. <laughs> All right, let's go back. Um, so that's kind of, you know, in, in when you're assigning your sounds, you can play it just so you know what sound it is. So I don't, I don't want to change the... the uh, but you're assigning a sound to a note, and that note is assigned to a pad. And that's really all you have to remember. So pad D16, which is the top right corner of um, that, you know, top right, 16, because it goes up instead of down. Um, note 98 equals sound piano, stereo. You know, it tells you if it's a stereo or mono sound. Assign program. Or master the whole master and program thing is a little bit I'm not totally hip on what that is so that's what the play uh, guy is now the auto is pretty cool it says auto chromatic assignment so that if your um, assignment of the MIDI notes via the MIDI pads is kind of like you know so note 98 is is a1 and note 50 is a2 and note 80 is a3 you know it's kind of mixed up if you go to auto and you say autochromatic assignment and it'll give you um, it'll it'll make it so that all the MIDI notes are in sequence you know so a1 will equal 50 a2 will equal 51 and so on which is cool if you want to chromatically play so let's just say here, let's cancel that. Let's get back to the main menu. So let's just say we got our our piano guy, right? And we go to um, 16 levels, right? And I'm not going to do velocity. I'm going to do note variation. Ooh, this is the cool thing about an MPC. Okay, so note variation. So you go 16. You, you got to hit the note you want, the sound. See, so it said no sound. That's why I didn't have anything. So now it says piano, note variation, then you go turn on, and then you come back to your... Um... So... The whole note variation thing, come on, where are you at? Is really cool because you can take one sample of a piano. And make it into a, um, which is how I did this line. Here, let me solo this for you. So that's basically how you you make a melodic line out of one sample on an MPC. That is one of the coolest things about the MPCs are is that feature. It's called note variation, and it's under the 16. This would normally be uh, say 16 level on top of it. 
assign 16 levels. So no variation is one, but you can also do um, velocity, which just is a volume thing. So then if you want to have real subtlety in your hi-hats, you can assign your hat to velocity of 16 levels and then play your part with the different levels so you can get some subtlety to it, which is cool. I don't use the velocity as much as I use the note variation. I love the note variation. I use it all over the place. For bass lines, piano lines, anything melodic you want on this thing, you can do from any sample. And it, and it, it duplicates it really well. It's really, you know... The way it handles the sample in its pitch shift is brilliant. It's one of the cool things about this thing. Um, I got a little sidetracked there. We're going to go back into programs. Um, so in the programs, if I take a sound, let's say I take this sound, which is what? It's piano sound. And then I open it with the orange button. And then I delete it right right there if i delete that fucker then it deletes it from all the programs if if other programs use that sound it's gone it's just gone from the whole thing but here's here's how you want to handle that if you wanted to delete it from this particular um program which is called classy then you go all the way to the left with the scroll guard and it turns it off so now this pad has nothing and then now you can go nuts with all the sounds but we want our piano sound back so we have to find it again if you delete the sound it's gone from everything so you have to be careful if you just unassign it from the um, from the note then it still is in other programs but it just takes it from that one and, and removes it Where the hell the sound went? There it is. Okay, so basically, it's actually cool if you wanted to play around with sounds for a part. So if you wrote a part on track, whatever, you can come into the program um, menu and you can just scroll through your sounds to see if something else might work better. That way, you know, it's an easy way to do that. Um, so there's that, you know, that's a pretty good overview of program. So the whole thing here, let's go back to the main menu. Now, if what's cool about this thing is that if I'm on a, a track six, which is piano, which is has drum one assigned to it, which is classy, if there's another... Um, so you can go drum two drum three and drum four and that's for each track and each drum you know drum one two three and four can, it can be assigned to a different uh, program so you can have a whole different set of 64 um, pad sounds to each track four times over you know so if I didn't find the sound I wanted let's say I had all the drums filled in with with programs then I could just switch boom to drum two for the piano track, which is killer. So there's a lot of room there for a lot of different samples. And if you if you have your sample thing together, meaning if you have good samples that you're gonna use and, and sort of clean up the garbage in your sample land, um, and then have them organized into, um, which I don't, into programs with names that make sense, you can have a program that's just 64 drums, program which is bass, program which is synth, program which is, you know, horns, program, you know, it goes on and on, violins, whatever. And then, you know, it becomes very powerful because you have four times 64. You know, plus you can have, you can assign different programs to drum one. Drum one doesn't just have to be classy, it can be, you know, three, four, five, six other ones too. So it gets pretty intense. You know, it's not, it's, it, it can, it can get deep. Okay, so go back into the load menu 
and we have four tabs. We have a load, a save. So you, from the save, um, that would be shift this guy, shift, shift this, goes to save. But you can get to the load from the save. The save and the load are on the same deal. Doesn't matter which one you go to. You can, you can, and they also both share the format. So if you wanted to format your um, your SD card, you do it here. I'm not going to do it, but that's how you do it. And then setup. You can set up your SCSI if you have a SCSI drive. You can choose the SCSI channel here. I have an Adapty drive, so it it handles that. Auto loading file type. So you can auto load um, when it first boots up, you can have it auto load something. But that's if your stuff is not in folders. See, I have all my stuff in folders, so it won't auto load it because it doesn't know which folder to look in. If I had, you know, just a bunch of sounds and a bunch of uh, program files just on the root, it would take it you know, the APS all or whatever I told it to do and just load it for you upon boot up, which is cool. That one is cool. So it won't do it when I first, which is fine. I don't really care. So we've gone over the, the way to get into your folders, you hit that guy, and then you scroll left or right, up or down, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, um, basically, I have six folders in here, and they all have different samples and different programs and stuff in there. So I can go into one and open that up, and then um, yeah, all programs, we can do that. Say, do it! Let's see, say, load that motherfucker, do it! So let's see what this sounds like, and I'll load, then I'll load up the, the MIDI files I have for that. Um, so... I want to get into the step step sequencing because everyone knows how to push record and everyone knows how to punch in and punch out, hopefully. But step record, I don't see a lot of people doing that. Um, and it's really useful because not only can you figure out where things are and affect them, you can tune from there. So let me load this fucker up here. Here we go. Okay, and then let's go to... All sequence and songs. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Load. Okay, so then, um, so we got that, and let's see what this is like. So basically, in the step edit mode, you just, it's this guy right here, step. You just hit the corresponding little button here, doink, and it takes you in a step. And you can copy events, you can delete events, you can insert and paste, and you can play. So the step feature is cool because uh, via a track, so if I wanted to edit a certain... So let's, let's edit track two. Okay, so there's that. Okay, so now we go into, now that we have the track selected, we go into step, which is right here. And then we can scroll with these guys in small increments and these two in, in bar increments. So if we go to the bar increments, you'll see seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then we go over here to with these guys and we say, okay. Yep. And it's only going to show us the bass guys. So it's MIDI channel, a uh, MIDI note 67, and it's it's um, pad C7. So that's the C bank and the 7 pad. And it's tuned at 110 right now. 100, because it's descending. 90. Now you can, in any of these steps, you can add, you can delete, you can change the tuning, you can change the velocity. So if you want to edit a part, this is cool. Just make sure you're on the right track. You have to select your track with the part you want to edit before you 
can edit that part. So you can scroll over and you can change the tuning. You can even change, you know, the note and the pad and the whole thing if you want. Uh, let's see if this has any parameters. Oh, the attack. Oh, look at this. You can change the filter of it. The attack. The decay. Ooh, all on this screen. Nice. The tuning. So tuning, attack, decay, and filter. So you, you get basically on that assign page on the uh, parameters tab, you can do it there or you can do it here on that particular event or, or yeah, I guess you call it an event. So that's cool. I don't know what the D stands for. V stands for velocity. Um, so this is the step edit and you can go all events notes all, pitch bend stuff, which I don't have, control change stuff I don't have, program change stuff I don't have. So there's, you know, pressure, all this shit I don't have. Um, I just do all events so you can see everything, you know. And if you have a bunch of shit there, then you can get specific with it. So there's that. Um, TC value 116. Don't know what TC stands for. Copy, obviously you can copy it and you can paste it. When you hit copy, it's just like a computer. It doesn't give you a dialog, it just copies it. You can delete it, you can insert it, and, which moves it, insert and moves everything ahead. You can paste and you can play the part just to see what you're doing. So if I wanted to change the pitch, instead of backing up and playing it again, I just hit the play guy so I can let's get back to a hundred um, so you can go in and tune your parts that way also the really cool thing because here's the deal in mixer mode so you go seven shift seven and you get into mixer mode and you go drum one All right so okay and you go into stereo okay so if I change this volume here, which is the, the mixer, the stereo volume mixer, for that sound, which is a bass sound, it's going to affect all sequences using this program because the mixer data is stored in the program, not the sequence. So to get around that, go back to the main menu. For this track, it has a velocity down here all the way to the right. Right, see that? Velocity 100%. Check it out. That's stored. It even goes to, you know, it goes up to 200. So you can go backwards or forwards. You can go louder or softer. But the default the default is 100 and so for mixing each sequence like for me a sequence is not a sequence that I'm gonna to string together I'm not gonna to string together four sequences to make a song I don't really do that that's what is designed for you to do but I don't do that each sequence to me is just a little loop it's a little ditty it's something that I just have fun with so it's important that I can have a separate mix for each sequence without changing my program and that's how I get around it. And it works really well. No problem on that one. Um, each track has a mute and a solo that you can see down there. And a track plus and a track minus. Which is great. And you can affect those via those buttons. Those are quick. Or if you wanted to scroll over, you can choose your tracks here as well. Same thing. On, yes, that's the mute. The solo... I think that's only via the button. You can say the loop on and off. Count, if you want to count in. Also to let you know, this always kind of threw me off. If you're going to um, want to count in when you record, you want to hit the record button first and then your play. Now this is record that'll write over 
whatever you've got on there. So if I've got, and then I hit this guy plus play to get my count in. See, it's just gonna override it now. It's not gonna overdub. So luckily I have an undo button. So I still have my part. All right, if you wanna overdub, you gotta make sure you use this guy first and then it'll start from the beginning. Now you're overdubbing, right? Now if you were on a different, that's because I'm on the same track. If you're on a different track, let's go up a track. If I'm on track two, it doesn't matter. So if I'm on track two, now I go record, since it's on a different track, see? It's only when you're when you're on the same track you have to be careful that'll that'll override it and this is the overdub guy and also this is the play where it is and this is the start at the beginning play where it is and that's your stop in the middle middle guys stop so I don't have any labels on these so you got to memorize this stuff this is a locate go to I don't really use that because my, my um, sequences are not that long. Um, these are step by step, backwards, forwards, in step mode, and these are bar by bar. That's your undo guy. The erase button's cool because you, in record, if you press down and hold erase and then just hit a drum as it's coming up, it'll erase that. That's how usually I do it. And then this is your tap guy, and then this is your slider. Or you can do crazy things with your slider. I'm not going to get into that. Um, this is your open it up. This is the, the let's go further and in, into a, a, another menu. This is your I'm, I'm going back home, home, back to the main page, you know. And these are the one, two, three, four guys. This is, I think, the, uh, the, the all levels the same. This is the 16 level guy, which I'm in right now. This is a sequence forward. And this is... Uh, ah, track mute. Track mute's cool as hell. So if you have, let's go back to the other sequence, and you can see that it'll show you the tracks. Now if I go play, and you hit the pads, you can do a little mix. So you just do that via the, the, the pads. That's another one that people like is, is you can mix your stuff that way live, which is cool. It's totally cool. And you got to be careful because it's bank specific. So track, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, sixteen 16 will be on bank one. Bank two will be 17 to whatever, 32 and then 33 to and so on. So. If you're over in this bank and you hit your track mute guy and you go, well, geez, it, it, where are my tracks at? Because they don't show up, right? It's like unused, 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 right? It's like, no, no, you got to go to the, um, the correct. Yeah. Because if you scroll over, then it's all. So that's that. This thing's pretty, um, I think, pretty basic. It's a pretty basic machine. It's a good looking, it's a high functioning machine. They're easy to work on. Um, get yourself a little SD or a CF reader in there. They're cheap. I got this for 10 bucks off eBay. I don't know if you can get them anymore for that cheap. But most SD card readers will work on these machines. These machines are designed to handle um, the adapty sort of, you know, the real basic readers that go from whatever SD to... Um, to uh, IDE cable and it's standard it's like a real standard thing and you can do SCSI and stuff like that too but this works really well and then you can use I believe whatever size card you want I don't know I don't know what the limitation on this two gigs is fine for me I mean I don't even approach that 
for because samples don't take up a lot of room. I don't do a lot of sampling on this thing. I just don't because I do all my sampling elsewhere because it's easier. The sampling on this thing it works and the trimming you can I didn't get into the trim page at all or any of that stuff and I do use the trim page occasionally but it's a little you know it's a little wonky it's kind of slow but it works you can trim things up and you can you can even create loops if you want but I find that better to do on the computer for sure um, so there you go man there's a little heads up on the MPC on this particular scenario and all I did is just put some paint on the original cover and the white pads and kind of makes it kind of unique looking. So, all right. Thanks for watching. Peace.